The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Spouses Talking Houses with husband and wife real estate team Jennifer and Brian Frost. Everything you want to know about buying, selling, investing, and owning property. So let's get real about real estate. Spouses Talking Houses. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Brian. And today we're going to talk about the New England Home Show. We went on Saturday and visited some of the booths, certainly not all of them. But we're going to let you know what we learned. We're going to let you know what our favorite things were that we saw. And we've got a couple of interviews with some of the exhibitors. Should be exciting. It is for me. (laughs) Uh, Before we get to that, though, how about a a glimpse of the realtor life? Uh, What have you been busy with, Brian? Uh, Let's see. Uh, did a multifamily appraisal this week. Uh, clo- oh yeah, closing on uh, Wednesday. Yeah, open house later today. Uh, filed my abatement for um, uh, taxes on our home in Londonderry. And what else? Oh, painting kitchen cabinets. Such fun. Yeah. So our old kitchen cabinets are downstairs in your workshop area, if you want to call it. Yes. That. Yes. And. Um, I've been wanting to do it for many years, so finally I've uh, I painted them all gray. So, so the I'm new sh- neutral. I'm sure that's going to be going out of style very soon. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyway, it's uh, it'll be good to have everything organized. Um, what I saw looks good. Mostly, you've just been disappearing, which is fine. Yeah, we work it, together, so yeah, yeah. it's it, fine it, if you it, disappear. It takes time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually, um, I'm not usually the cook in our family, but I made a. a Beef stew the other day. That delicious. Delicious. I made a wonderful roast chicken, if I do say so Ooh, myself. That was some of the best chicken I've ever had. Yeah. So that is the buttermilk roast chicken, and um, it's on Salt Acid Fat Heat website, which is related to the Netflix show. So yeah, I've been on a comfort food kick, I guess, and um, enjoying it. It's nice to have some home cooking. Anytime meal you for... want to cook that chicken is fine with me. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's the yeah. So I now have two dishes I'm allowed to there make. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's just talk about the home show. First of all, our daughter Casey came with us, though I noticed she managed to stay out of all the pictures except for one where she must have moved because she's a little bit blurry. You think she did that on uh, purpose? She photobombed that picture. Oh, was that yes, it? Yes, all right. So, all right. So. so I was the one who walked around and chatted with people, and you were the one who took all the photographs and the video. What a surprise. Which is perfect, (laughs) which is perfect, yeah. So I would say um, the most popular exhibits that I saw were people hanging out at the tiny house and people hanging out over where all the um, patio furniture was. Sure. It it wasn't quite what I expected. Uh, I think the last time I'd been to a home show was probably, I don't know, probably 10 years ago. I'm thinking that, yeah. So, uh, uh, but it was interesting. And there were uh, a lot of interesting products there, but uh, mostly the usuals. Well, there was a lot of uh, solar home booths. True. So that was a little bit new. It was great to uh, talk to the architect that was there. And uh, uh, Casey, our daughter, is uh, taking architecture at Wentworth. So uh, he took the time to uh, talk with her for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes anyway. Yeah, so that was Michael Blutt Architecture, and he is uh, south of Boston, and he does additions, renovations, new construction. A uh, very nice guy, very talented. So it was nice to talk with him. Definitely. Um, there were several HVAC companies there. Um, <clears throat> there was some mattress displays, which makes sense to me, I guess. But I was like, that's not why I went to the home show. And hot tubs, of course. Mm. Several uh, several hot tub booths. Do you think we should replace our hot tub? Well, we already got rid of our hot tub, but you think we should get another hot tub? Well, I mean, the uh, electrical and the slab is there, and uh, Casey wants one. So I know. This is probably another hot tub in our future. Yeah. All right. That was pretty tempting. I should have uh, paid more attention to them. I should have paid more attention you to them. You were working. I, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so one of the um, first people that I talked to was a gentleman from About Face Kitchens. 
So my burning question is, is what's going to be the newest thing in countertops? Because I just think granite, I've seen way too much granite in my lifetime. Yeah, well, I still think it's the best value out there from a performance standpoint and from a durability standpoint. Um, there's a lot of um, the man-made granites that are, that are out there have issues that a lot of clients don't know about. You mean like the quartz? Yeah, Okay, quartz. that's what I have. All yeah. right. Yeah. So, what, so what should I know? Well, you should know that it's not an impervious product. Right. That it requires maintenance, that it needs to not be oiled, but it needs to be cleaned. Mm -hmm. You know, and it needs to be cleaned on a regular basis so that, if, you know, you don't go to bed after a Saturday night wine party and come up the next morning and expect to be able to wipe things right off. Right. Of all right. the countertops that we've done over the past 30 years, um, we have about five of them out there that have problems with staining, and they're all man-made. Interesting. Okay. Not one countertop from a natural stone has ever given us any trouble. And I also thought with the man-made ones that you can't put uh, heat directly on it because no, there's a, a resin in that. there, right? Yeah, but did you talk to that woman down the hall here? No, that, no, that, no. no, that's not true. Okay. No, it has all the heat-resistant qualities of a regular, of a regular um, stone countertop. Okay. There's no restrictions from a heat standpoint at all. Yeah. The resin is strictly there. The epoxy is there um, to bind the products together. Okay. So that was really interesting because I think for at least 10 years I've been trying to find out what's going to replace granite and I still don't have the answer. And that'll be granite. <laughs> I guess so. I guess granite is here to stay. It lives forever. Um, we also spoke to a gentleman at Prime Storage. They have those um, storage places all over New England and I have got some... Um, some discounts for 50% off for first three months that I can give out, and I'm definitely going to be using those with our clients. Um, it's so important when you're getting ready to sell and when you're getting ready to buy that you start to get De -clutter. organized. Declutter, exactly. Um, we also had a chance to talk with the Real American Dream Home Company, and they do log homes and uh, timber frame homes where you do your design with them, and then they make a kit. Um, that they deliver. And so that's something that way back when, when we used to go to the home show, was something we were always drawn to. Oh, definitely. And then we, uh, of course, ended up buying a, uh, a small log home as our first home. Yeah, our first home was a log home, and that was that was a dream come true. So um, another person that we spoke to, you'll have to tell me what order we're going in, but would it be Chris from Eversource? It's Chris from Eversource. I've got a short interview with him. Eversource, you said you travel around and do a lot yep, of these absolutely. home shows. Yep. So what are they looking to educate people about? So uh, our company, I work for Technior, we're subcontracted through Eversource. Okay. So they want us to be face-to-face -face with customers. They want us to give people, you know, that have questions, maybe a little bit more knowledge on, you know, LEDs in general. Right, Because you know? right. when you walk into a big box store and you see all these bulbs, you kind of really have no oh, idea, I have no idea. what you're yeah. getting into, right? I have no idea. Yeah, absolutely. And I certainly don't know what we even have in our house yeah, yeah yeah of course yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so what do you what are you guys marketing here you've got boxes so, yeah, this of is, stuff this is a great kit that we have this year it's a mixture of wattages mixture of LEDs we throw a desk lamp in the mix a couple Wi-Fi bulbs and these are just to you know conserve save people energy save electricity in the kit specifically is 460 watt bulbs 475 watt bulbs four 100 watt bulbs two three-way bulbs a desk lamp and two Wi-Fi smart bulbs, all for ten dollars. Amazing. Ten dollars? Absolutely. Eversource subsidizes everything here. The utility company wants yeah. people to save and conserve, okay. use less electricity. So one second. So Brian, we need to buy one of these kits for ten dollars. <laughs> absolutely. He's in the process yeah, he's of doing already, it. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. This is crazy. It's That's an a good deal. deal. That's an amazing deal. And we give people the option, you know, the warm option, yep. or the daylight. What's the most frequently asked question that you get? Oh, the most frequently asked. Let's see. Well, what color should I get for my house? Or, um, you know, uh, what wattage does it actually give off? Like, a, for instance, a 60-watt bulb is not using 60 watts. It's using 9 watts. So that's where you're saving on your Oh, energy. really? Yeah, that's okay. where you're saving on your electricity. I did not know that. All right. Yeah. So a lot of different, you know, different types of bulbs. A lot of people ask, 
um, what bass style do you right. have? Because yep. this is just a standard bass. Standard bass. Any lamp, lighting fixture, ceiling fan, anything you have at home, these you are your swap replacements. It out. Exactly. Yeah. They made it very simple to convert or That's switch awesome. over. Yeah, absolutely. So we're just trying to reinvent ourselves in a way. Yeah. Everything's going to be smart, you know, smart technology nowadays. You're going to be able to talk to all your light bulbs and everything. Exactly. So that, that's where it's yeah. going, you yeah. know. So that's that's where, you know, our kits are going to eventually evolve to something like that. So I wanted to buy those kits in bulk because obviously that was a great deal. Oh, it would be great for uh, client gifts. Housewarming gifts, house yeah. Housewarming gifts, uh, Yankee swaps. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So Chris said the maximum they, that they can sell to any one person is four. So potentially, since there were three of us, we could have walked out with 12, but we didn't have any way to carry well, that the much. The boxes were about uh, you know, a foot and a half by a foot and a half, so yeah. it was like... I had a hard enough time just carrying the two we bought, purchased. So, but but we were excited about it. It's always good to get a deal. Casey was very excited. About <laughs> you know, it, she's so. gonna take those. <laughs> she's gonna take those bulbs with her to school exactly. and use them in her dorm. Yeah, it was a good deal for ten bucks. Uh, we also stopped by a booth for something called Fly Homes, which has just come into the Boston area, and um, they help people to buy and sell. Um, making cash offers, and then they kind of back them up on that. So I'm going to um, contact them and find out how we can partner with them to help our clients. Sure. Um, one guy that I really enjoyed talking with, and I hope we can get him on the podcast sometime, is Dave from 128 Plumbing. And they were one of the major sponsors of the show, so they had a pretty big booth. And here's our interview with Dave. Hi, I'm here with David from 128 Expert Home Services. And you guys do a little bit of everything, don't you? Yes, we do. We do plumbing, heating, cooling, drain cleaning, and electrical work. So none of the really sexy stuff. <laughs> well, to me, it's sexy. <laughs> It keeps me up at night. So the first thing that we were talking about was pipelining, which I just think is so great because one of my fears when somebody buys an older home is that the water pipe to the street or the sewer pipe to the street is going to need to be replaced or repaired and that's going to involve digging and a lot of expense and cast iron and you've got a solution for that yes we do so with permalina yeah in pipe relining it's the only way you can get from the house to the street without creating property damage so from inside your home we insert a liner into the existing pipe, we prep and clean the pipe, we camera it so we know the condition of it, yeah. we send the liner down there and it cures in place. So we'll come in the morning by 5 o'clock, we're up and flushing and it's 100% done, we're not touching the front lawn. You're no, not pulling up trees, not pulling you're, up not, trees, you're not pulling no up sidewalks, driveways. Yep. No, no details, wow. no DOT, yep. no OSHA issues at all. So it's all done from inside the home, straight outside, no VOCs, so yep. you, you cannot physically tell that you're even in the house working. Uh, we do a lot of suburban properties, uh, and in New Hampshire, they have private well and septic. D does that also apply to private well and septic? Yes. So this is any type of drain. So you can do the drains inside your home, outside, inside, branch lines, roof leaders, pool lines, anything that, any type of pipe can be lined and or spray coated yeah. so you do not have to dig up even, even works on pools so what if i had like a um a french drain type system and it had been in place for a long time and i wanted to make sure i was clearing that out now if i had a home in the city and maybe my house was a uh, hundred feet from the street and i wanted to do my um my sewer line mm -hmm. what 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 budget would i be looking at on lining it's going to start at four thousand dollars and up okay so it all depends on the length of the line the condition because we actually prep the line before we put the liner down there we use a machine that de-skills inside of the pipe right to make room to make room so once the liner goes down there it's back to the old pipe again not everything all the buildup in size so that's all removed okay I'm a big fan of the mini splits, and you guys are uh, a rep for yes, we're, for those. Yes, we're a diamond elite contractor. 
So that resolves around how many systems we put in, what type of education we have. So our systems, our customers get a 12-year warranty material and labor. Okay. So we're a diamond elite. That's the highest level they have for Douglas on Mitsubishi. So I showed a house recently where the um, house was originally built with electric heat. It's a two-story home. And they put in um, a baseboard, forced hot water in the first floor. They left the second floor electric. And my buyers were like, oh, that's not good. We don't want electric heat. And so I said, well, I, I think a mini split would be a great solution yes. here, right? Yes. Yeah, so the, the mini splits, because they're so efficient, depending on the city and town, they get a lot of rebates. So you can get 0% financing and several thousand back on rebates because it's all Energy Star rated. Is that Massachusetts? In Massachusetts and other areas, too. Municipalities, all different municipalities have different programs. Okay. But the idea is to get away from any type of gas or any type of fossil fuel. That's going to be a thing of the past. Right. So if we're having a conversation in 10 years, 40% of your clients and mine will have solar on their roof and ductless for heating and cooling. Right. That's the trend that's going. That's There's not enough natural gas to service all the homes and businesses. Right. So a lot of a lot of areas, like you saw Brookline already, mm -hmm. um, Wakefield's going that way, Redding's going that way. No more new homes or businesses that you can bring gas to the home. So you have to have existing. But anything new, you have to do some type of ductless. So that's why solar is going to come into play with ductless. That's that's where we're going. So why is solar uh, good with ductless? Why are they a good pairing? Because the ductless works off electricity. Even though it's, they call it inverted technology, mm -hmm. when you have solar, you can, now you're going to collect the sun. Right. You're going to store it. Yep. Okay, and then use it as you need it. So that's where we're going. We're going to be able to store on electricity inside the home through batteries. Because right now, when you have solar, you're actually sending it to the electric company and then they're sending you back yes. energy yeah. when, as needed. Yes. Because you're not storing it in the house. You're not storing typically. it in the house. So right. they're, they're doing a buyback. Right. But a lot of areas are getting away from that. Like Florida, you cannot do that in Florida. So you get a battery. Yeah. So that's the way it's all going. That's very cool. Yeah, that's the How way it's going. How wide of an area do you cover? We service all of Eastern Mass. So okay. Yeah, we have over 80 employees. Yep. So we handle all those different disciplines. So we're from Cape Ann to Newburyport, down to the South Shore, mm -hmm. Metro West. All right. Awesome. Good. It's well, it's been great to meet you and talk to you, well, David. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you. That much. Not I. <laughs> I know, but I... I was interested. We had we also had a long conversation about the Navian um, instant on demand hot water and how you love ours so much and how how I don't like ours <laughs> very much. And he gave me a few solutions on that. So that was that was really good. Um, so next up, I've got an interview with uh, Brady Built Sunrooms and Tiny Homes, which was definitely the most popular booth at the show. And also, um, I've got an interview with WAG's uh, hot water heater valve, which does not sound interesting, but I did find it interesting. <laughs> uh, before we get to that, though, Brian, let's just take a break and do something we call How's the Market, sponsored by Real Value Appraisal. Uh, sure. Uh, today, just a tidbit about uh, who's buying homes. Who is buying homes? Uh, well, according, according to the NAR, National Association of Realtors, 37% uh, of home buyers last year were still, they're millennials. Oh, okay. And what's a millennial? Well, yeah. a millennial is uh, anyone born between 1980 and 1998. Uh, what so our kid is technically not a millennial because she was no. born in 99. No. All right. And she's not ready to buy a house. So. No, she's not. No, no. <laughs> uh, but... Um, what I also find interesting is uh, the features that millennials are looking for. Uh, so, uh, also according to the NAR, NAR um, the, the top features millennials want is a laundry room, sixty-eight percent. Yep, hard, I agree. Hardwood front exterior, eighty-one percent. Yeah. Patio, eighty-one yep. percent. Garage storage, eighty percent. And a walk-in pantry, 79%. I agree with all of those things. We don't see a lot of walk-in pantries in our first-time buyer homes, though. Oh, definitely not. Uh, and, uh, you know, patios, you know, they're, they're starting to be, become a thing. But uh, but decks think, were more prevalent. Yeah, I think yeah. decks are still more prevalent. So yeah. uh, that's interesting. Um, that is interesting. So, so if I was going to 
flip a home and I was targeting millennials, I would be going over this list with my client. You might want to think about some of those features. Absolutely. And I'm probably the only person in the history of time who moved their laundry from the first floor of the house to the basement. Uh, well, that would that involved a kitchen remodel, so. Yeah, but also when we purchased our house, the laundry was in the kitchen. In the kitchen. <laughs> and I did not like that at all. I did not want to be sorting my dirty clothes in the kitchen. I didn't want lint in the kitchen. So. Um, and I, I don't think that's a thing still, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know whose brilliant idea it was to do that. I've shown a few houses where I've seen it, and I just immediately go, ah, the horror. You can do laundry and cooking at the same time. <laughs> yeah, that probably was the intention. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then when we added on our mudroom, we really should have made that a little bit bigger and incorporated a laundry room. I do regret that we didn't do that. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Anyway, so to continue on with uh, the home show, one of the most popular um, exhibits there was a tiny home, and that was that was brought in there by Brady Built Sun Homes. They've now also gone into the tiny home business. I met Derek, who's one of the reps, and um, he was just a great interview. I'm here with Derek from Brady Built Sun Homes, and you're also now in the tiny home business. We are, and we're very excited to be. It's uh, it's exciting uh, movement, and it's yeah. been awesome. Yeah, I see a lot of people actually checking out the little the little tiny home that you brought with you. Yeah. Yeah. So what are your price ranges for the tiny homes? Uh, so we've got three different uh, size models that we're starting with. A uh, 21 foot uh, Hillcrest, then a 25 foot uh, Bayview, mm -hmm. and then the 31 foot model, which is the largest. Ranging starting from 79,900 to up to 105,000 for okay. the 31. Okay. And those are all portable? Yes. All right. Yep. And so then um, what would people add once they had received received that that tiny home what would they need to put in there so um, it's towable just like an RV um, so full-size truck and you're pretty much good to go depending on how you're gonna be using it right so there's there's kind of two classifications the tiny house on wheels which is like an RV that you tow around yeah and then there's a tiny house on foundation um, all of these will be custom building in our factory in Auburn Mass right by Worcester okay um, and we're gonna be custom designing them based on how you're going to be using it and and what you're looking to do. So a tiny house on wheels, for example, you just tow it with your truck. Um, if you're going to be more stationed at like a, an RV park, it's going to come with all the you know electrical septic tie-ins and things like that. If you're looking to be a little bit more off-grid and maybe we got some land in New Hampshire, yeah. um, you know, it come with solar panels and, you know, uh, tanks and all that. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. So so you have like some base models, but each one of them is made to order? Correct, yes. Okay, so what kind of time frame is that? About six months. Okay. Um, so we've been Brady Built Sunrooms for 40 years. I know, the name is very well known. Yeah. 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 Um, but two years ago, we got really interested in the whole tiny house movement, and it fit really well with our model because we can build everything in our factory and mm. um, go from there. So there's quite a lot. We, you know, custom design. We have an entire design team um, from start to finish. So, a three-season room, a sunroom. I'm in heaven. Yeah, sure. and I'm always like the sunroom, especially. Yeah, yeah. It becomes your favorite room on the house, and right. That's what our customers tell us. They yeah. spend all their time out there, eat dinner, eat breakfast. I mean, when you can bring all that natural light and sun and enjoy the uh, outdoors, but have all the comfort of the indoors question you need to ask is am I looking for a three season enclosure mm -hmm. or an all year round room because right. by code the different categories of sunrooms uh, there's a big difference okay so Brady built sunrooms for example we only build all year round rooms okay and they're essentially a full-fledged addition on the house you're right. adding an entire another room to the house that's important because you want to think about um, resale value and, absolutely and how it uh, um, affects the market, you know, the value of your house and market. If you were to, you know, go to resell in the future. 
Um, and it also affects what you can do in the room. So if you want to be able to put heat into the room and you want to be, be take out your sliding door and have the room open to the house, right. you'd be looking for an all year round room, which is what we build. Um, that's important because it, only by the code, only solid wood framed rooms meet the energy codes. Oh, of course. To yeah. be an all year round room contact one of us and we go through a design consultation and we find a style and a design that you like and come up with a budget and go down the merry path. And then once you've got that sunroom ready, do you take care of the install or do mm -hmm. I need to get somebody locally to do that? Yeah. So the really nice thing about Brady Built Sunrooms is that we are one of the only manufacturers in the area. So everything we do is custom built from scratch in our factory, again yeah. in Auburn. Yeah. Um, and then it's our team that is, so it's going to be built efficiently and streamlined in a controlled environment. You know, you're not buying, you don't have a contractor buying materials and then they sit outside for three months right. getting yeah. rained on mm -hmm. and hammer, hammering away. Um, so it's all built in our factory and then trailered out to you. Uh, and then it's our team that will sky crane it over the house onto the prepared site. And Oh, I would love to see that. Oh, it's exciting. Yeah, it's a little fun. nerve wracking. Yeah. You hold your breath when it goes over the house <laughs> like don't drop it um but it, it's super fun the neighbors come out take photos uh and it's fun because it's not there one day and the next day it is right right and um did i already ask you what's sort of the timeline if i wanted to do a sunroom great question so with brady built sunrooms uh being um custom built mm -hmm. there's usually like a two to four or five week design process because we're going to do a full set of engineer drawings right. um that you're going to be able to make changes to and really uh, have a, a, a part in the design and then it takes us about three months to build the room uh, and then deliver it so most projects like six to eight months from start to finish delivered to your house okay and our really special form formula of glass and an insulated low e coated um, most projects range from about thirty thousand to sixty thousand. Okay, and then um, what is your typical or your average that you see? Is it well within that range, or uh, definitely? I mean, obviously, you could go higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we yeah. delivered a double decker in November that was like an eighty-five thousand dollar room, oh. but it was gorgeous, open to the house. Oh, it sounds, really tall ceilings. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Um, but yeah, most projects fall within within that range. Okay, excellent, good. Yeah. Well, so nice. To meet you, Darren. You as well. So, Thank you. So, uh, should people look you up online? To sunroomsbybrady.com if you want more information, or tinyhousesbybrady.com if you want more information. Um, can I get a sunroom for Christmas? We can talk about it. I really want to see the crane. Oh, that's all you want to see because because <laughs> you probably won't use it. Well, I would because the the spot that I like most in the house is the sunniest spot. Okay. Because we have all those skylights. All right, but this would be off the basement, probably. So yeah, that I that uh, that, that I don't. Be want. a nice addition to my man cave. All right, so maybe on our <laughs> next house, I could get one of those fancy conservatories. Okay. Would that be all right? We'll look into that. We'll look into that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I have always loved sunrooms, and um, the tiny house thing. I mean, you could have a tiny house. I could have a tiny house, <laughs> and then we could have a tiny house in the middle where we watch TV and have dinner. Does okay. that sound good? No, I'm not living in a tiny house. Oh, all right. Well, I like the idea of us having our separate <laughs> houses and then our gathering house. Well, we can work on that. Yeah, I think we could save a lot of marriages, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, I don't know what attracted... I do know what attracted me oh, to Oh, I do, too. The Wags booth. Yeah. Was, it was the, the little uh, dog. The little dogs they were given out. Yeah, so they, they're... Not live ones. <laughs> yeah, they had stuffed dogs, and their logo includes a golden retriever. So that's how I ended up talking to Stefan from WAGS. So I'm here with Stefan from WAGS, which has got a cute little dog logo, and it is the one-shot wonder. What, what's Correct. that? It's a fully mechanical valve that shuts off your water supply and draws vacuum to your water heater, so it doesn't do the inevitable, which is end up flooding out a basement or your uh, finished basement or wherever you happen to have the hot water heater. Uh, an ounce of prevention. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and it's fully mechanical, so no batteries, no Wi-Fi, no maintenance required yep uh, the way it works is on a, uh, um, a water-soluble fiber that holds back an 80 pound spring with a piston and an o-ring 
and I have an insurance carrier, which I won't mention, but I get a $65 uh, credit on my homeowners for having one. For having one of these. Right, because this is preventative measures. Now, can can I, ins- not me, my husband, can a homeowner install this themselves or do you bring a plumber in to do this? I suppose you could. It's a it's plumbing 101, and especially today with uh, you know uh, shark bites and so forth, you can and yeah. piping. Yeah. We recommend just use a professional. Right. It, it's literally uh, if you're adding a water heater, it's about a 15 to a half hour at best work. It's uh, just two two uh, lines of pipe and some fittings. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. It's uh, it's very simple to install. We're located in Rhode Island. The company is called AquaGuard. Uh, you can Google us uh, at, or go to wagsvalve.com. Wags, W-A-G-S, valve, V-A-L-V-E, dot com. Okay. Correct. And uh, you'll find it also online, and you can purchase right online. And so how much are they? So for an electric water heater, they're 124 Yep. For a gas, it comes with a harness, which also shuts off your gas. They'll shut off the water feed, draw vacuum, and shut off the gas. And those are 154 Okay. So if it's volume, anything past six, there are discounts involved. All but right. if you're buying individual ones, or if you're a CAI member, we do have a, a discount program involved so with So what them. is the CAI? CAI is Condo Association Institute. It's a national oh. tr- uh, association of uh, condominiums, HOAs, and so forth. And they're everywhere. New England has their chapter. Connecticut has, uh, they're not part of the New England chapter. They have their own. Yeah. But we're on a national basis that is available. And so, and all, obviously in a condo, if you have a water leak from your hot water heater, it might affect the other units around Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not like a private homeowner. Has, it's your your property. It's right. Only. It right. can affect your neighbor downstairs, to your, to either side. And also, uh, it may affect common ground. We do have a, a discount program involved so with So what them. is the CAI? CAI is Condo Association Institute. It's a national oh. tr- uh, association of uh, condominiums. Um, so... I was attracted by the little dog, and he gave me the stuffed puppy, <laughs> yes. which is awesome. Means um, we don't have to get a real dog. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> um, but it turned out to be very interesting. And, and you and I walk into so many resale homes where there are stains on the basement floor because the hot water heater let go. Yeah, I mean, it happens all the time. Uh, we we got lucky where we replaced ours uh, prior to it exploding, but it was uh, it was over 30 years old. That's a little scary. The li- average lifespan is only 10 to 12 years on them. I know. I uh, actually did um, flush it out, and uh, there wasn't really a lot of sediment in, t- in there. So I guess that means we probably do have pretty good well water. <laughs> okay, which relates to another <laughs> to another episode. episode but. Yeah, yeah. Um, so th- there was a lot of interesting uh, stuff at the home show. I'm glad that we went. Yeah, me too. I haven't been to a uh, home show in uh, quite some time, and uh, yeah, it was very interesting. So I really liked the booth for the Shelf Genie that had all of the different rollout trays and spice holders and pots and pan holders that you can put inside your cabinets. Well, we are uh, ready for a kitchen remodel, so... We just... I, uh, I, just 10 I years know. ago. <laughs> no, it's more than 10 <laughs> years ten, ago. Really? Yeah, it's okay. like 14 years ago. No, I think it's more like 10. We held my 40th surprise birthday party in a gutted kitchen. Now you're dating yourself. And now I'm going to (laughs) say out loud that I'm 54, 53 years old. Okay, all right. 54 years old, uh, yeah. I'm just saying uh, the backsplash and some of the other uh, aspects of the kitchen, the flooring, is uh, is dated. Well, now you're talking like a realtor. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me that my kitchen that I feel like I just barely did is is dated. <laughs> okay, well. So, um, what was your favorite thing that you saw at the home show? Uh, the uh, what was it? Gluten gluten free rum cake. <laughs> the rum cake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest. I have his card uh, in case It you... was delicious. You didn't try any, I did didn't you? try it, okay. and it's gluten-free. I should have tried yeah, it. Yeah, it was very good. I should have tried it. I think that um, I mostly just loved all the different kitchen displays because I love to see what's going on, and there's definitely still a trend for white cabinets, for painted cabinets versus wood. And, yeah, no doubt. I saw several displays with the uh, white cabinets. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's that's still very hot. And uh, solar was certainly hot. I didn't stop and talk to any of the solar booths because we 
have names of a couple of solar people in the area. Or the hot tub guys. I di- yeah. Yeah. Well, Casey kept <laughs> wanting to go into one of the hot tubs, which obviously was not going to happen, but it made me think we might want to go back to having one. Sure. Yeah. So um, admission, by the way, was only 10 bucks. Oh, I didn't even know it cost anything. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and parking was 22 bucks. There you go. And um, us driving in Boston together was not fun. It, it was a nice uh, nice way to spend an afternoon. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice, definitely. So I, I'm glad that we did that. We learned some things, got some good contacts. I think I've got a couple of folks that I would bring in as guests that we met there. And I'm super happy about the discounts on the storage units. Sure. Because that's a big part of our business as well. Oh, maybe we'll go to the uh, New Hampshire one, uh, I guess, in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think that one might be next week. And then the flower show is coming up in Boston. We used to go to that a lot. Um, We? Oh, I used to go to that a lot. (laughs) I used to always look forward to that. I don't think I've ever been... But now I'm less landscaping landscaping oriented. I'm more like let's get a condo oriented or a hot tub or a hot tub. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it was valuable information. I'm glad that we went. Uh, we're grateful to Ben. This is our first episode that Ben has produced for us here at the Studio Twenty One Podcast Cafe. We hope you enjoyed this opportunity to get real about real estate. Please like, subscribe, and share Spouses Talking Houses with your friends family, neighbors, and your favorite bartender. If you like this show, we'd be grateful if you leave a review. We listen to your feedback and reviews help others find the podcast. Take care. Music courtesy of the Eric Lindbergh Trio. Please visit his website at www.ericlindberghworld.com. Jennifer and Brian are licensed to practice real estate in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Brian is also a certified general appraiser in New Hampshire. They are not lawyers, accountants, home inspectors, or therapists. Real estate customs and rules may be different in your area. Each Keller Williams Realty office is independently owned and operated. The realtor name is trademarked to members of the National Association of Realtors. If you are currently under contract with a real estate agent, this is not intended as a solicitation. Views expressed on this podcast by Jennifer may not be shared by Brian and vice versa, nor are they necessarily the views of Keller Williams Realty. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.